I will work my best to be the most successful artist that I can be. I can be, I can be, I can be. 14 number one songs, nine Grammys, Oscar nominated, an entrepreneur, a visionary. Beautiful. When I met her that day, I knew she was a star. Remember it as Rihanna. Remember it as being the artist from here. I came here and made it, and made it internationally. Welcome to Unsolicited, where I make videos about things that nobody asked me to. In honor of Rihanna performing at the Super Bowl this weekend, I thought it'd be fitting to take a trip down memory lane and discuss her rise from a small island gal to a billionaire entrepreneur. Robin Rihanna Fenty was born February 20th, 1988 in the small island of St. Michael's Barbados to Monica and Ronald Fenty. Rihanna and her two younger brothers, Rory and Rajad, lived with their parents in this bungalow. Oh, this one where was your there. bedroom? My m me, my brother, and my mom stayed in here. She had a rough childhood. Her father struggled with addiction and was abusive towards her mother. As a child, she would have such intense headaches that she got multiple CT scans for, and when her parents divorced when she was 14, the headaches went away. Growing up, Brianna used music as an escape from the problems at home. I always used to sing. In the shower, I used to sing at home. Neighbors would complain because I used to be singing so long. There's an if you reach into your soul, and the soul that you know. In 2003, she started a group with two of her classmates from school, and they auditioned for producer Evan Rogers while he was on vacation in Barbados. Evan said that when Rihanna performed, it was like the two other girls didn't even exist. He ended up inviting Rihanna to the States to record some demos to send out to labels. The recordings were sporadic because Rihanna could only record on school breaks. Her demo got sent to Def Jam and landed in the hands of A&R Jay Brown, who played the record upon the replay for the label president at the time, Jay-Z. At the time, Jay thought that the song was too big for Rihanna, but he brought her into audition anyways. It was so big that I thought the record would be bigger than her. Right. I thought the record, she would be the upon the replay girl. So, I, But I took the meeting anyway. I've never met a celebrity. And to have to audition for one and meet him at the same time, like Jay-Z, I was so I was hysterical. She came in for the audition, Jay-Z was there, L.A. Reid was there, and when Rihanna sang, they were so impressed that they signed her the same day. Beautiful When girl. I met her that day, I knew she was a star, and, and I tell her, uh, there's no way out of this office. I signed her that day. Um, she came into the office like 6 o'clock, and we signed that. We signed that by three in the morning. We made sure that she didn't walk out. That's how much of a superstar she was. She signed a six album record deal with Def Jam and moved to the United States from Barbados, living with Evan Rogers and his wife while she recorded her debut album. Her first single, Ponder Replay, was released May of 2005, hitting number two on the Billboard Hot 100. Her second single was If It's Loving That You Want. And her debut album, Music of the Sun, was released in August of 2005, peaking at 10 on the billboards, selling 2 million copies worldwide, and becoming certified gold. There's so many teenage girls who would love to be in my shoes, and I've dreamed of this for so long, I'm not looking back. She then started working on her second studio album, A Girl Like Me, which was her first album to become certified platinum. The album peaked at 5 on the billboards, with the lead singles being SOS and Unfaithful. SOS was her first number one single. It, se up. it seemed like just yesterday you released your first album, Music of the Sun, and, and now you have a new album called A Girl Like Me. <laughs> different is it from it, the last it, it one? I feel like Music of the Sun was my introduction to everybody. Hey, I'm Brianna, the girl from the Caribbean. A Girl Like Me is more telling you who is the girl from the Caribbean. In May of 2007, Rihanna Rihanna released her third album, Good Girl Gone Bad, and this was the birth of Bad Gal Riri. She embraced a new look, sis chopped that hair off, and embraced a darker, more edgy style. The album was giving very much grown, very much the opposite of Ponder Replay days. She was done being the cute, innocent teen from Barbados. Good Girl Gone Bad, I know a lot of people are probably wondering why that title. This album, for me, it, I feel really liberated after I recorded it and I listened to it. It makes me feel so good. Like, I wanted to do everything my way, you know, and it's kind of like a bad girl attitude. I got a little rebellious, I got a little attitude, and the sound of the album is really, really edgy, and I felt like the title matched my personality now. Good Girl Gone Bad peaked at number two in the US and received amazing reviews from critics. This album gave us Shut Up and Drive, Hate That I Love You, Don't Stop the Music, and Umbrella featuring Jay-Z, which was number one for 10 consecutive weeks. Umbrella ended up winning Rihanna her first Grammy for best collaboration in 2008. Dad, <laughs> I know I promised you I'm going to give you my first Grammy, but we might have to fight for this one. Good Girl Gone Bad became two times platinum and has sold 9 million units worldwide. Rihanna then released Good Girl Gone Bad Reloaded, which gave us Disturbia and Take a Bow. In February of 2009, Rihanna was scheduled to perform at the Grammys, but her performance was canceled, and reports came out that she and her boyfriend at the time, Chris Brown, had gotten into a physical altercation. Chris and Rihanna's relationship started back in 2007 when Chris recorded an answer track to Rihanna's hit song Umbrella, which he performed live with her on tour. They started off as friends, but their relationship grew, and they started to be spotted out together more and more, and it became very obvious that they were in a relationship. The media thought that this was a match 
match made in heaven. The two of them were both rising stars, young, rich, successful, gorgeous. But their relationship was extremely toxic. They would get into physical fights. It would be fights, it would be verbal fights, physical fights as well. I'm just gonna be honest. We would fight each other, she would hit me, I would hit her. Um, and but it never was okay. Which all built up to February 8th, 2009. That night, Chris and Rihanna had went to Clive Davis's pre-Grammy party. They saw Chris's ex at the party, and then when they left and got in the car, Rihanna saw a message from the ex in Chris's phone, which started the argument. She looks at the phone, and there's a message, and it says, kill the Grammys, do your thing. Um, and I didn't read the rest of the message, I didn't open it. So she opened the message, and the rest of the message said, I'll see you at the Clive party. So I thought she thought I was lying. She starts going off, she throws the phone, I hate you, whatever, whatever. Starts hitting me, we're gonna go Lamborghini. I call him in LA and he wouldn't he wouldn't tell the truth. So I wouldn't drop it. Things got violent between them, leaving Rihanna with injuries to her face. The entire police report is very graphic, and if you want more details about exactly what happened, I made an entire video about it a long time ago. Mind you, this is one of my first videos and it's actually terrible, but if you want more details, that's where you'll find it. Chris was charged with assault and he got five years probation, a year of domestic violence counseling, and six months of community service. Rihanna's first release after the incident was a feature on Jay-Z's Run This Town. In November 2009, she released her fourth studio album, Rated R, where once again she transformed her entire sound and look. This album had a much darker tone than her previous ones. It was emotional, heartfelt, and it was reflecting on the trauma that she had been but through. I wanted a real album with true music, um, real deep lyrics, clever lyrics. So why do an album now? Why not take six months or, you know, you got the money, you got the time, everybody would wait for you. Well, that was the original plan. Um, I knew that after the Grammys is when I would, I would have taken a little bit of time, but I drove myself crazy for the few weeks I had off before I got back in the studio. In the summer of 2010, Rihanna collabed with Eminem on Love The Way You Lie, which was a major worldwide success, going number one in 20 countries. In November of 2010, Rihanna released her fifth studio album, Loud. <laughs> Check out your hair. Thank you. It's fiery. Yeah, it's loud. So is this kind of like a new Rihanna with a new look? Um, It's definitely a new look. And I would say Rihanna, I, I, I just keep, evolving you know I keep growing I want to keep getting better so my fans can grow with me mm -hmm. because it always exudes um, the energy and the place that I'm in at that moment every time I make an album I love making music and I feel like as a musician there's no reason to stop unless you really want to there's no this album was more upbeat than the last. She had changed her look once again. This was Red Gal Riri era. This is the album that gave us Man Down, Only Girl in the World, and What's My Name featuring Drake. Drake and Rihanna have been rumored to have an on and off relationship for years, and this collab is sort of where the rumors started. They performed What's My Name at the Grammys, and it was very steamy, steamy. Rihanna would go on to collab with Drake for years to come. In November 2011, Rihanna released her sixth studio album, Talk That Talk, which debuted at number three in the US, with the lead single from the album being We Found Love which became Rihanna's longest running number one single. It's a sold out show here in Manchester tonight. We have a number one song in the UK with We Found Love. And as of today, Talk That Talk is number one on iTunes in the UK. That same year, Rihanna collabed with Armani for her first fashion line. She had previously started in their winter campaign and she worked with them to create jackets, jeans, t-shirts, and lingerie. In early 2012, Rihanna collabed with Drake again on Take Care. And then in February, she won a Grammy for her collab with Kanye and All The Lights. In March of 2012, she released two collabs with Chris Brown, remixes to Birthday Cake and Turn Up The Music. This was met with a lot of criticism considering their history. This was actually around the same time that they kind of got back together, which was awesome with criticism, obviously. Aside from that, Rihanna released her seventh studio album, Unapologetic, in November of 2012. It was Rihanna's first number one album. The lead single, Diamonds, went number one, and her other single, Stay, featuring Mikey Echo, peaked at number three on the charts. In 2013, Rihanna won her sixth Grammy for her music video for We Found Love. After the release of Unapologetic and going on tour, Rihanna announced that she was going to be taking a year off from music. Also in 2013, Rihanna engaged in another fashion venture, unveiling a line with River Island at London Fashion Week, and she went on to release several collections with them. In 2014, Rihanna left Def Jam to fully sign with Jay-Z's label, Rock Nation. Rock Nation had been managing Rihanna's career since 2010. On her hiatus, she was honored with the CFDA Fashion Icon Award by Vogue Editor-in-Chief Anna Wintour. She proves that incredible style can help take a talented young woman from a small island to the world stage and along the way spark a lot of conversation about elegance and empowerment. As far as I could remember, fashion has always been my defense mechanism. Even, even as a child, I, would, I remember thinking, she could beat me, but she cannot beat my outfit. <laughs> that same year, she was appointed creative director at Puma, 
Her first Puma shoe, Creeper, sold out in three hours. Creeper ended up being crowned shoe of the year. Throughout her partnership with Puma, she's expanded from shoes to clothing. While working on her eighth studio album, Rihanna released the single, 4 or 5 Seconds, with Paul McCartney and Kanye, as well as Be Better Have My Money. In January of 2016, Rihanna released her eighth album exclusively through Tidal. It peaked at number one on the billboards, the main singles from the album being Work featuring Drake, Needed Me, and Love on the Brain. Throughout 2016, Rihanna was featured on several singles. She collabed with Kanye on Famous, This Is What You Came For with Calvin Harris, Too Good with Drake, and Nothing Is Promised with Mike Will Made It. Rihanna also became the first black ambassador for Dior and released a sunglass collection with them. It was the first time an ambassador had been given the opportunity to produce a product with them. That same year, Rihanna was honored with MTV's Video Vanguard Award, a very high honor in the music industry. She performed a fire medley of her most famous songs throughout the show, each performance with its own concept. I remember watching this award show like it was yesterday. Rihanna killed every performance and was stepping on necks in every outfit. For some reason, Drake presented the award to her and he sparked dating rumors once again when he told the whole world that he was in love with her. She's someone, she's someone I've been in love with since I was 22 years old. Back in 2016, when I was 16 watching this, I thought it was so cute. But now being older, I'm like, why would he use her moment to profess his love for her like we had a wedding reception? And she's super dubbed him when he tried to kiss her. I feel like it should have been Evan Rogers or Jay-Z who presented her with the award, you know, since they discovered her. But whatever, we move. Anyways, in 2017, Rihanna collabed with DJ Khaled and Bryson Tiller on Wild Thoughts and was featured on Kendrick Lamar's Loyalty, for which she won a Grammy for. And then Rihanna goes on her infamous hiatus for music. In 2018, Rihanna told us that her ninth album would be released in 2019. There was rumors there was supposed to be a reggae album too, like we was hype. But of course, that didn't happen and we've been in the dark about this album ever since. Rihanna's ninth album has been a running topic on the internet and all of Twitter, all the people in Rihanna's comments on all platforms have been demanding this album for years. And Rihanna thinks it's funny. She thinks it's so funny the way she continues to play in our face. Thank you. Thank you. The Navy needs new music, Rihanna. Uh, oh girl, who sent you? <laughs> okay, so give me something about the album, Rie. Um, Pending. I could give you a dot, a dot, and a dot. I'm always working on music, and when I'm ready to put it out in the way that I feel fit, it's going to come out. Do you think this stage in your life is going to inspire new music? Oh, gosh. It, you can't ever... You know, this is why my fans love you, you know? I know. Because you ask all the good <laughs> questions. Good yes, you're good. still going to get music from me. Like, whatever you know of Rihanna is not going to be what you hear. I'm, I'm really experimenting. And music is like, it's like fashion. You should be able to play. But Rihanna isn't making music because she's too busy running her billion dollar businesses. In 2017, Rihanna launched her cosmetics brand Fenty Beauty, which revolutionized the makeup industry, offering 40 different foundation shades going from very fair to dark skinned. Rihanna didn't create a brand that catered to just one type of person. The brand eventually expanded to 50 different shades. She truly created makeup that is inclusive for every skin tone, leading other makeup brands to expand their shade ranges as well. It was called the Fenty Effect. Now I'm making makeup that I dream women of all ages all size all skin tones all religions all cultures I wanted women to feel included I think that for R Fenty Beauty Rihanna to come out with 40 shades your real G. Everything that this launch represents is just so amazing to me. It really reminds me of this quote that I've always heard of, that I've always reminds me of the beauty industry. And the quote is basically, white businesses get funded based on potential and black businesses get funded based on proof. So a beauty brand can launch a range of foundations with 30 million that are medium to light and only five dark shades because they want to see if they sell, right? They're waiting to see what proof they have, okay? It was hella risky because no brand, no brand ever has come out with that, come out with that many shades. Now I'm not saying Fenty's the only one with 40 foundation shades, she's definitely not. But this is, in, in my generation, the first time I've ever seen a foundation come out with that many dark shades. And look what's happening, they are clearing the shelves faster than all of the other colors. In 2018, Rihanna launched Savage X Fenty, an inclusive lingerie brand featuring models of all sizes, shapes, and colors. 
I enjoy lingerie. I'm a woman. I, I like to have fun. So I wanted to make stuff that I felt comfortable in myself and maybe think about things that other designers don't think about when it comes to women's body types. In 2019, Rihanna launched Fenty, a luxury fashion house under LVMH. She was the first woman of color to do so. However, due to the pandemic in 2020, Fenty was discontinued in 2021, most likely because it was very expensive and unemployed people in the midst of a pandemic weren't using what little disposable income they had to buy designer clothes and stay in the house. Now, we all know that Rihanna uses her last name Fenty for her business ventures. In 2019, she actually sued her father, Ronald Fenty, for creating a company called Fenty Entertainment and parading it as if it was associated with her. The suit claimed that Rihanna's father attempted to book a 15-day tour in Latin America without her consent. He also attempted to trademark the Fenty name and open a string of hotels. However, Rihanna ended up dropping the lawsuit in 2021. Rihanna's just out here thriving though. She is the world's richest musician and is the youngest woman billionaire. Kim Kardashian is the second. You know, it was real weird getting congratulations uh, texts from people for money you know I was just like wait how, how does I never got congratulated for money before like it made sense when I realized that it, it was inspiring to people that they felt like this is something that they could achieve yes. knowing where I've come from knowing my humble beginnings they see uh, the possibility and it gives them hope and that, and that made me feel um, really happy. Although she isn't currently making music, Rihanna is running her companies as well as enjoying being a new mother. In 2022, Rihanna announced that she was pregnant having her first child with rapper ASAP Rocky. Her son was born in May of 2022 and he is the cutest. Rihanna is now back to engaging in music endeavors though. In October 2022, she released Lift Me Up from the Wakanda Forever soundtrack, her first solo release since her album Anti back in 2016. And now this Sunday at the Super Bowl will be Rihanna's first live performance in five years. But if when you become a mom, there's something that just happens where you feel like you could take on the world, you can do anything, and the Super Bowl is one of the biggest stages in the world. As scary as that was, because I haven't been on stage in seven years, there's something exhilarating about the challenge of it all. And it's important for, for me to do this this year. It's important for representation. It's important for my son to see that i cannot tell you how excited i am for this performance i know she's gonna kill it i can't wait to see which songs she performs all i know is she better not sing no lift me up we do not want to hear that time is limited we only have 13 minutes to deliver greatness and we do not have time to hear about no drowning in it no come on now anyways y'all that's it that's the video thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like comment share subscribe all the things that youtubers be telling people to do and i'll see you next time bye